Tonight on Newswatch 18, a house fire interrupts a local family's Thanksgiving break. We'll tell you where. Ames straw poll is under fire. See why local Republicans want to get rid of the 30 year old poll. And we have all your sports and weather updates. This is Newswatch 18. This is Newswatch 18. Newswatch 18 starts now. Good evening and welcome back from the break to the November 27th edition of Newswatch 18. I'm Gabriel Stofa. And I'm Lisandra Villa. And as you may have noticed, it's becoming quite cold outside. Isn't that right, Sam? Yeah, Lisa, it's going to be especially cold tonight, but the good news is this should be the coldest night of the league. Let's take a look at actually what it is out right now currently. We've got about 30 degrees on my graphic. We could pop up any second here, but maybe not, so I'll just talk about it anyway. Oh, there it is, 30 degrees in Ames, just a slight south southwest, southwest wind of about 7 miles per hour and a few clouds out there. If we had some more clouds, maybe we could keep some of that heat in, but we should see that temp fall from 30 down to about 18 degrees tonight. So, Lisa, it's going to be pretty cold tonight, but we should see a bit of a warm-up, and I'll tell you about that in a little bit. This Thanksgiving break was not all family and turkey for everybody. Last Saturday, just before 5 in the afternoon, Ames firefighters responded to a house fire in a two-story, single-family home on Lincoln Way. When firefighters arrived, they discovered the source of the fire was a burning mattress on the second floor, though no flames were visible from the outside. All occupants escaped the fire and suffered no injuries but firefighters had to rescue two cats from the building. Damage is estimated to be at $20,000. The Ames presidential straw poll could go up in smoke. Governor Terry Branstad has joined a nationwide call by many Republicans to do away with the Ames straw poll. Many say the poll has outlived its usefulness. It was established in 1979. The poll has been a staple in determining front runners for the Republican presidential nominee. But for the past two election cycles, the poll has not been representative of what candidates are actually leading the nation. A spokesman for Branstad says this discourages top-tier candidates from attending, which threatens participation in caucuses. The straw poll's fate remains a state issue that will likely be under discussion by the GOP until voting for the event occurs in 2015. You may have noticed red ribbons around campus this week. The ISU Global Health and AIDS Coalition has put them up to promote their AIDS Awareness Week campaign. People have this great misconception of what AIDS is and that it only affects like people outside of um, their own, own reality. And like the thing with infectious diseases is that there is no, it doesn't respect boundaries. And um, unless we stop them, it's really a public health crisis. The club has events happening throughout the week ending on Saturday, or World AIDS Day with a candlelight vigil. Last summer, a well-respected soldier from Jefferson, Iowa was killed in Afghanistan. Jarris Davis checks in with the parents of the fallen soldier one year later. Soldiers put their lives on the line when they go off to war, and that's what this soldier did. But the outcome was heartbreaking. Matthew Nielsen was killed in Afghanistan last summer when an enemy mortar exploded near him. What was left of the body was so little that his parents never even got the chance to see their son one last time at the funeral. A year and a half later, and the healing process is still tender. In a year and a half, it, it's still uh, an open wound, and... Uh, there's times when it, it feels raw. I could be here at the house or driving down the road and, and hear a song or, or think of something about my son and get a little heart pain. I'm not the kind of person that would sit around and bawl all day because I know where my kid is and I know what he believed in because he stood up for it. With a heart that was bigger than he was, he made sure to always leave a positive impression on every place he went to, and his efforts did not go unnoticed. Recently in September, the church that he went to in Cedar Falls, College Hill Lutheran Church, actually dedicated a monument to him. They have a flagpole, they have a monument, they have a bench right out in front of their churches. Memorial after memorial can be found in honor of his name such as this memorial at his former workplace in this Jefferson Fairway, to the memorial that his father made for him in their front lawn. One thing is for certain. Miss him, miss him like they're, you know, a bigger hole than the size of Texas. 
I think we'll be okay. takes time. It might take until, you know, the end of time, you know, for me. Jairus Davis with I-State News. Winterfest has taken over campus, and one of the first events up was the Noel Open House. On Monday, November 26th, everyone was welcome to tour the President's House and enjoy the famous Noel Hot Chocolate. Janet Leith, Iowa State's First Lady, hosted the event, making it their first open house since they arrived on campus. The number of guests was estimated to be over 400. This weekend, Ames High School Lords and Ladies are set to serenade audiences with their 24th Madrigal Dinner hosted at the Northminster Presbyterian Church. Uh, Ames High School students have rehearsed their royal court roles for the past 10 weeks, hoping to draw audiences back to the time of the Renaissance. The entertainment will be this Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The community event has proven a fun time for all throughout the years, and 2012 looks to be no different. Iowa State's Farmhouse Museum showed its Christmas spirit this afternoon. The museum displayed Christmas-themed exhibits complete with lighted trees, wreaths, and stockings hung by the fireplace. Students could enjoy the sights along with hot cider and cookies while Christmas music played in the background. And of course, the event would not be complete without an appearance from Santa Claus. Winterfest activities such as these, this, will continue throughout the week. So, Matt, I hear there was oodles of sports events going on over the break. What you're, happened? You're correct. You couldn't have said it better. Oodles is right. I have uh, men's basketball and football and women's volleyball and basketball. I'll tell you a little bit of details on all of it coming up after the break. You're watching Newswatch 18. Welcome back to Newswatch 18. I'm Matt Rhodes with your sports. What a season it's been for the Iowa State volleyball team. After starting the season ranked 10th, the Cyclones had a rough start to Big 12 play. The team, the team took a tough five-set loss to Texas in October, which seemed to be the turning point. Iowa State won their next ten matches, sweeping seven teams and losing only three total sets in the process. Last Sunday, the team found out they'd be hosting the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament and playing Indiana-Purdue in Fort Wayne on Thursday. Let's head now out west where we are going to find the number two national seed. That is the Stanford Thrilled, really thrilled. You know, I, I felt like, you know, we had a shot, but e even beating Texas, I really didn't know if, if that would happen. So, absolutely thrilled. I think this team just did some tremendous things the last month and a half um, to, to, earn, to give us even a chance to be in that position to host. So, I credit the team and their perseverance and what they were able to do the last couple months of season. <laughs> I'm really excited. You know, um, I think last night we showed the great crowd. Um, and the energy that we can get at home, and I'm excited to just play in Hilton one more time. It's awesome to be here, um, sleep in your own bed, have your same routine. That's going to be really nice for us. Um, just having our fans on our side, playing on a familiar court, um, gym that we're, we're used to playing in is going to be a really good advantage for us, so I'm excited. You know, had we not beat Texas last night, I don't think, I don't know if we would have been seated, but I, I, you know, I wouldn't think so, so that was huge, and you know, that was something that we, we talked about before the match, just carrying in momentum into the NCAA tournament, um, and I think that we're doing that, and um, we're in the right place right now, I think. The Cyclones play Fort Wayne on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. at Hilton Coliseum. If the team advances, they will play the winner of the North Carolina and Cal Berkeley match at Friday at 6.30. <clears throat> in Cyclones women's basketball, they had their first in-season tournament participating in the annual Junkanoo Jam in the Bahamas over the Thanksgiving break. The women faced off against Loyola Marymount and Illinois in the contest and defeated both to bring home the title in the tournament. Hallie Christofferson was the offensive star in raking in 29 points over the two games. Christofferson has now scored double digits five games in a row. After a solid offensive and defense performance in the tournament, the women rank 24th in an Associated Press Top 25 poll that heavily favors the Big 12. The ladies are currently playing against Drake tonight at 7 at Hilton Coliseum, and the latest update I have on that is at halftime, it's been 
Now, going on to Cyclones men's basketball team, they traveled to Las Vegas over the Thanksgiving break to play in the Global Sports Classic at the Thomas Mack Center. The Cyclones faced off against their first ranked opponent matching up against the 22 ranked Cincinnati Bearcats, where they played a close back and forth scoring battle, but ended up falling just a little bit short, 78 to 70. Their second match of the Sports Classic was against another tough opponent in 18 ranked UNLV. Although displaying a valiant effort against UNLV, scooping up 24 offensive rebounds, the Cyclones still couldn't finish the game, losing 82-70. to Men's team has a lot of practice ahead of them as they have this week to regain their strength and confidence while they wait to face off against BYU Saturday afternoon at Hilton Coliseum. The Cyclones football team faced off against West Virginia on Friday at Jack Trice, looking to get seven wins on the regular season for the first time since 2005. After a stellar debut performance against Kansas and leading the team to bowl eligibility, the third-string quarterback Sam Richardson started once again for the Cyclones against West Virginia. Although he didn't put up quite the same numbers as in the Kansas game, Richardson went 13 of 31 for 162 yards with three touchdowns and showed great awareness when being rushed out of the pocket by scurrying for 119 yards on 18 attempts. The Cyclones lost 31-24 and ended off the season with a modest 6-6 record. Now, official bowl games have not been released yet, but the Cyclones are projected to face off against either the Minnesota Gophers or Purdue in the Heart of Dallas Bowl in January. So that's everything I had for sports for you guys. Sam, what's, what do we got going for weather? Matt, I have actually a pretty nice forecast in store for you heading into this week. A little chilly tonight, but stay tuned as I'll tell you just how much we're going to warm up heading into the weekend. This is Newswatch 18. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I hope you had a fantastic Thanksgiving. It's good to be back, actually, for the, my last show of 2012 so i'll see you again in 2013 2013 hopefully if you believe what the mayans say cold night ahead of us actually coming up but attempts are going to warm up and maybe some snow on the way maybe 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 next week hopefully not though because i'm liking this snow free atmosphere right now current temps out there a couple more clouds have moved their way in we got about a 26 degree temp out there but look at this about no really measurable wind for us so it's very calm out there and it's actually quite nice out but again it's going to fall pretty chilly so be on the lookout for that 26 degrees in Des Moines about 28 in Ankeny up here in Fort Dodge about 27 degrees so currently across more of the state though about the same really a little warmer up towards Mason City again 26 degrees in Des Moines and 34 off in Council Bluffs heading into tomorrow or sorry lows for tonight 19 it's saying in Ames right now this model but I think it could even get a little colder to about 18 22 degrees in Des Moines and take a look up at Mason City and Sioux City about 16 degrees so quite frigid all across the state, but no snow luckily. Will be some frost out there on your windows tomorrow morning. 47 degrees in Des Moines for tomorrow. 43 across the region though, mostly 40s and even a few 50s down across into Colorado, the areas of Kansas. But a little bit of a front's actually moving through. We will see a bit of a warm up heading towards the weekend. Tomorrow's high is about 46, which will you know, feel about 10 degrees or so nicer than it did today. 47 in Des Moines at about 44 in Fort Dodge. So quite beautiful, especially as we head into the weekend, we could see about mid 50s popping up. Clouds and radar around the region actually off to the north and east. It's a couple snow showers actually up in Madison, Wisconsin. They've had some snow in the very northern part with a few clouds really just settling around the state. As we zoom in to get a better look at Iowa, however, a few snow flurries were popping up there in the northeast corner, but they disappeared right off. And really just some heavy clouds and moved their way in and are starting to clear off, but there still is a light band showing up out there, especially if you're out looking. Looks quite good. So taking a look at future casts, we do have a cold front, very light though and very broad moving into our area. We're mostly under high pressure dominated. That's why, look at that guy, it feels so nice. Oh, he slid out of the way on me, but mostly sunny conditions throughout the rest of the week into the weekend. It's a little cold, but there is a bit of a warm up coming. Now, just we going to take a look at tonight's forecast. Burr, I said 18 degrees, partly cloudy skies heading into tomorrow. We warm up a bit with 44 degrees, a little sunnier, a little bit warmer heading into this weekend. Let's take a look at your extended day forecast. Uh, as we head into Saturday, there it is, 54 degrees, and Sunday, 57 degrees, Monday, maybe even 60. So it is warming up into next week, but we will start to fall down in temperatures again. That's all I've got for weather. Back to you guys through the desk. Thanks for the update, Sam. The Powerball Lotto jackpot has reached the half billion mark, the highest it has been in history. And with wallets light from Christmas shopping, folks across Powerball's 42 states are throwing down their dollars to strike it rich. Since the summer, <clears throat> Iowa has seen Powerball winning tickets, the first purchased in June in Cedar Rapids, with a $241 million payday, and last September in Des Moines for a $202 million sum. 
Iowans are pouring out to purchase the potential to partake of the big prize, but the actual cash payout is only $347 million. It's likely this week that more than a few people will be wishing on a star. So guys, this Thanksgiving break, I got to spend some time with my family in good old Lincoln, Nebraska. What did you guys do? Well, I didn't go to Lincoln, Nebraska. I actually stayed and worked, which wasn't very fun, but a little money's never bad in the pocket, so I, I'm not complaining. I uh, had fun visiting my, my sister came back from Colorado, hung out with my dad. We uh, brewed some beer and wine, you know, good family gathering. I got to eat some turkey in Marshalltown, and I got to watch the Hawkeyes lose, which is always a treat for me. So it was a good, you know, decent weekend. Yeah, I was there too. It was really cool, that game. Mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, my roommate said he can only eat turkey one time a year, and I thought he was crazy because I think I could do this every single month. I just, uh, I got leftovers left, and I've definitely uh, been indulging in those. Yeah, I had turkey twice. It was awesome each time. See, the food comb was the best part, though. It was like having the freshman <laughs> back, but not really good. It was... <laughs> All right, that's all we've got for this edition of Newswatch 18. Tune in for the last show of the semester on Thursday for more Cyclone news, weather, and sports. Thank you for joining us. See you next semester and enjoy the holidays.